In section 4.3, we look at the relationships between variables. We'll be looking at the nature of the relationship, we'll be looking at the strength of the relationship, and we will also briefly look at some nonlinear relationships. In section 4.1, we looked at linear data, time versus distance, for a marble that was rolling. In 4.2, we were able to use functions to calculate the slope and the y-intercept. In that example, the data values, the blue dots on the graph, fall in a straight line. In fact, all of the blue dots land on the line. This is a very strong relationship. The dots fall on the line. And this is a type of relationship we usually see in algebra class when we're doing y equals an mx plus b equation. We get a very tight, clean line. In statistics, you have to get used to the idea that sometimes there's a linear relationship even when all of the data values do not fall exactly on a line. So we'll be looking at that in this particular video today. So in section 4.3, one of the relationships that we will look at is the nature of the relationship. This is a perfect positive relationship seen on this graph. What I have here is actually an algebraically determined relationship. This is being calculated by an algebraic equation, 0.7 times b2 plus 3. Y-intercept is 3, this, the rate of change or slope is 0.7 and all of the points fall exactly in a line. You can see the slope and the intercept down here. This is referred to as a perfect relationship. Uh, this is a mathematically perfect relationship, and it's positive because the slope is positive. The slope is positive, the slope of the line. That is, as the independent variable, the x-axis variable, gets bigger, the y-axis variable also gets bigger. This is a positive relationship. A perfect negative relationship would look like this. The dots again land on the line, but the line goes down, if you will, from left to right. As the independent variable, as the x variable gets bigger, the y-axis variable gets smaller. This is sometimes referred to as an inverse relationship. This is a negative relationship, and you can see the slope is negative. You might note that the intercept is positive. Never look at the intercept when trying to determine whether a relationship is positive or negative. It is a slope that tells us whether a relationship is positive or negative. If there is no relationship, if the x variable changes, but the y variable is unaffected by that change, this is referred to as there being no relationship. Whether the independent variable is 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, the result is always 5. So if x is, is 7, y is 5. There is, there is no impact of the x variable on the y variable. That's the way we think of it in statistics. The x variable is not influencing the y variable. And you can see that the result is a slope of 0. A slope of 0 always indicates that there's no relationship between the two variables. There's one other type of no relationship. It's a little, a little different. And that's a relationship where the independent variable is always one single value. And the y uh, value, the dependent variable, uh, can be anything. In this particular case, the slope is undefined and the intercept is undefined. These are concepts that we, statistics borrows from algebra. The vertical line has no definable slope and certainly no intercept. In essence, the relationship is undefined. That refers to the nature of the relationship. Relationships can be positive, negative, or no relationship. These are perfect relationships in that all the points lie along the line. The strength of the relationship refers to just how strong it is. What we just saw were perfect relationships. Here we see a strong positive relationship, but not perfect. 
By strong, what we mean is the scattered points run roughly along the line, but they do not form an exact perfect straight line. We can see a slope here of 0.68 from the slope function and an intercept of about 3.02. So this is a strong positive relationship. In the next section, we'll quantify this with a number that we'll call the correlation coefficient r. But for now, that's what a strong positive relationship looks like. These points look a lot more scattered, the point of blue dots here. They still form a relationship as the independent variable increases on the x-axis. The dependent variable does actually tend to increase on the y-axis, tends to increase. It doesn't always increase, we can see that in the data up here. The values don't always increase, sometimes they go down. But overall, there is a moderate positive relationship. And again, we'll quantify this a little later in another in section 4.4. Uh, Here we see a weak positive relationship. You might note that there's not a lot of visual difference between this and the previous example the moderate positive relationship. The human eye is not as good at distinguishing a weak relationship from a moderate relationship visually. This particular relationship is, is however, weak. Uh, the, uh, this, the slope is a little bit shallower, but we'll need to use the correlation coefficient to be able to sort out weak relationships from moderate relationships. Positive and weak will require that. There no relationship. This is another type of no relationship. You might note the slope is almost zero. In fact, the slope is effectively zero at 0 0.0105 here. So this is a no relationship. This is random. And again, in the next section, we'll quantify this. But when you see a slope that is essentially zero, uh, there is probably no relationship there. Uh, there are some un interesting exceptions, but you've probably got no relationship if your slope is very close to zero. And in this case, it is indeed very close to zero for this data. So there's no relationship. It's scattered with no relationship. So you have weak, moderate, which are hard to tell apart visually, strong, and then none. The key to recognizing none sometimes is that the, the points don't, you, you couldn't really draw a line that trends up or down through the data visually. But if you come back to this moderate, there's, the points tend to run visually. There's a little bit of a uphill run to them. And I think that's about the only way you can distinguish it visually. The slope, though, still tells you the nature of the relationship, positive or negative. This is positive. And in this one, the slope is so close to zero that there's really no slope. A quick look at some nonlinear relationships, which we don't usually explore in this course, but they are capable of being done from the Google Sheets desktop, uh, not, from, not from the app. The, these graphs that you're seeing were done in the desktop. Uh, they're being displayed on the app, uh, but they were actually done on the desktop. You can see uh, in this first graph, I've actually displayed an equation for, the, for that graph. So the desktop does have more capabilities, as was detailed in another video. So those working on the app, you can see here that the data rises, and the curve it's following is an exponential curve. The function that's in here is 0.5 times the, e the EXPB3. So we're, that EXP is spreadsheet speak for the base of the natural logarithm E. Don't worry if you don't know what that is, that's okay. That would be an exponential relationship. And uh, again, we don't usually work with that in this class. A polynomial relationship here is simply X squared. It's squaring the numbers. Two squared is four, three squared is nine, five squared is 25, and so forth. That's a polynomial relationship. It's a curve. Nonlinear relationships are curved relationships of some sort. Here we see a logarithmic relationship. 
Sometimes these will occur in you know, physical science and engineering. We'll have logarithmic relationships. Also can occur in certain business equation situations. So logarithmic and Google Sheets will fit uh, a logarithmic curve to your data if the data is appropriate to a logarithmic. And finally, a power series here uh, shown uh, with an equation, a square root function in this case. And again, the Google Sheets desktop app can do those. Those are nonlinear relationships. We don't work a lot with them, but they are capabilities of Google Sheets desktop and can be used if, if need be. So section 4.3, we looked at whether a relationship was positive, negative, or none. We introduced the idea of the strength of the relationship perfect being one of the strengths, strong, moderate, weak, and the no relationship at all. And these will be quantified in section 4.4. So that's an overview and introduction to the types of relationships that there are, the nature, the strength of the relationship, a bit of introduction. Do bear in mind as we talk about relationships like moderate positive, you can have a moderate negative relationship you can have a strong negative relationship. The positive and negative just tells you whether the slope is positive or negative. The strong, moderate, and weak refer to the amount of scatter in the data points away from the line. So these strong relationships can be positive or negative. The moderate relationships can be positive or negative. And these no relationships, we think of them as having neither positive nor negative slope. They have a slope very close to zero.